if we haven't met, I am Macy, also known as the Reverend Lunch Lady, and I am the founder of Big Happy Love, which is a love coaching program and company for to support single women who really want to be in a meaningful relationship to help you move beyond any of those limitations and have that. And I like to call it unicorn love because it's the kind of love that we don't think can exist, but it does. So if you just want to date or to hook up, you know, I'm not really that kind of coach. I'm here to help you to create a conscious relationship with yourself so that you can expand into something else, even greater. So, hi. Oh, so there's people over here too. Yay. Oh my gosh. Cool. So there's some Reverend Lunch Lady fans over here. Um, yes, we're going to have to do another reading soon. Oh, hi, Dana. Yes. Hello. Hi, Jennifer from Philadelphia. So glad you're here. Super cool. Hi, Christine. Yay. Okay. And Nicole. Yay. Yay. Oh, the other. Oh, Jen. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes. Sateva. Satnam. So glad you're here. It's hoping you would come. Um, okay. So let's get started because, like I said, um, I'm sharing 11 places and spaces where you can find uh, quality people. And just to be really clear with everyone, like um, when I first wrote this, I wrote, you know, to find your guy, 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 guy. But I, it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't care about that. I'm here to serve women in whatever kind of amazing relationship that you want to call in. So I like to say guy or gal. So if for some reason I say guy um, and you're looking for a gal, don't worry about that. Just, you know, know that this is about love and that's what I care about. So, so, okay, what else do I want to tell you? So, yes, make sure you have a journal. We're going to go through things. Certainly, if you want to ask questions, you know, at the end, you know, I will talk about how you can set up a time to work with me if you're thinking, you know what, I really do want some hand-holding on this. I really do want to make this my last decade single. I want to let the holidays be a time where I can you know, change my reality of relationship. You know, if you found that it's been painful or um, just frustrating, exhausting maybe, then let's change that for you. Because, you know, I'm talking about um, something tonight that actually is a little bit beyond the first phase that I like to talk about in my Love Muffin program, which is and I'll, I'll just share this, that, you know, I consider the path to love in three phases. And the first one is that phase where you're, you're opening yourself, well, let's say, you're clearing out the cobwebs, you're, you're getting um, rid of those known and non, own, unknown limitations. So if you're noticing you have the same pattern over and over, you're breaking those patterns, that are stuck in your body and that's the first phase so the first phase is like okay well what can we do to be ready for love like to create that relationship readiness so that you can even put yourself out there and date if you haven't done that part it can be a little bit triggering sometimes so and then the second part is the dating like you know and tonight we're going to talk about um kind of stuff that's a little bit on the cusp of phase one and phase two um, and then the third level, or the third phase, I call it, is, wow, I met this amazing unicorn. I don't want to screw it up, <laughs> you know? So, like, what do you do at that point? Because I'm sure you've all been in relationships where, you're, where you recognize that different kinds of fears come up at different stages. And I'll tell you, just to be honest, like, for me and my story, if you haven't heard my 
story and I, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing, but you know, I struggled for a really long time about that around age 40, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm still single. And I did a lot of this work that I teach. I mean, there's endless amounts of hours of study and tools and trainings and therapy and coaching that I'm, I'm have immersed myself in, I will say hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of coaching to, you know, get to this point where I'm coaching other people. And so once I was able to implement some of the tools that now I've brought into my coaching, I um, attracted an amazing person. And many of you actually even know him. Um, I call him Laser Beam Larry. Um, he loves the buffet. Cindy knows that. Um, and you know, it was a totally different caliber of person. So I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you, it's not easy, you know, having a relationship and being conscious in relationship and, and having awareness for relationship, um, has its own challenges. Like if you just want to kind of like have a mediocre relationship and not really, you know, address anything. That's one thing, but, you know, Larry and I are both, you know, really wanting greater. So then there's that experience of understanding each other and communication and all the things that come with that. So, so that's what I would say. The, the third phase kind of is life and all of this is life. So there's really no like, oh, yay, I got my unicorn gallop away, happy. Um, Certainly, it's exciting, yeah. And you know, this is we're we're here because I know that you are all here. One, you're here. Hello, you're here. You're dedicating time to this. You're you're wanting something greater, and I just want to celebrate you for that. I'm so happy you're here, and I want to give you um, an experience that you can leave this and be like okay, like now something can change for me. And so that's, that's what I know is possible with all of these things that I'm about to share with you. Okay. And then at the same level, if you leave this and you're like, oh my God, I have six pages of notes and I still feel like crap. Like, why don't we have a conversation? Okay. Because, you know, I know for me, I love having support. So, you know, that's the time when I like to do a happy and love strategy session. We can talk about what coaching looks like. We can look at your specific thing because you are a unique unicorn. You know, there are things that you've experienced that no one else has experienced. And like, how do you then navigate it? And so that you can have the best possible relationship. And that is super fun for me. So. Um, yay. Okay. So are we ready to dive in? <laughs> okay. So remember what this is called. This is called where to find the good ones, where and how to find quality unicorns. I probably should have said that. Um, so in that, you know, I know so many of you get frustrated with the whole online thing. Like it can be exhausting. It can be, um, you know, if you have been in a long-term relationship and then you're coming out, you know, from divorce or whatever, and then you're like, oh my God, when I was dating, we didn't have all these tools enough. That can be really stressful. But I also want to remind people that that's not the only way, way. that's the, not the only way to turn on your magic that is the love vibe of you. So um, if we're thinking, okay, this is the only way and that's the only time we're kind of like focused on that, then we're missing a lot of opportunities too. So that leads me into the first one, number one in the wares is he is in between. And you guys are throwing tomatoes at me. You're like, what? Uh, no, you're not. I hope not. Anyway. Your unicorn 
she or he um, also is in the world, also is going to get coffee, also is going to the bank, also goes to the grocery store and does all the regular things. So finding love, it's not just about, you know, the singles event, the online dating app, the specific party. This is about, you know, being in, uh, in awareness and actually opening your eyes to, to be aware of, okay, well, who's here? Who's around me? And um, so, you know, that sounds really simple, but so many times we're on autopilot. Um, I'm going to shut Facebook because it's making a lot of noise. Hold on. Where did you guys go? Hi, where did you go? Um, there you are. Okay. So, you know, how do you um, kind of choose to just be open? And the other thing I want to say about this, like all, oftentimes we're like, oh, well, you know, I've put up all these walls and barriers because I got hurt before and whatever. Like, what if that's not really a thing? Like, it can be sort of a convenient way to say, like, I'm choosing not to see what's around me. So just be conscious of, you know, what you're, you're choosing, frankly. Um, so I just love to think about this one and the, the mantra that I um, put with this, because when I created this class in um, every where <laughs> and everywhere I added a mantra. So this one is everywhere I go, there's an opportunity for love. Everywhere I go, there's an opportunity for love. So having your eyes open, pretty simple. So number two, You can find your unicorn with your, your, I said good guy radar, but it's good guy, good gal radar that, um, that you get to turn on. So what does this mean? So obviously it's also kind of about being in the space in between, but it's also like, what would happen if you started to take inventory of and perceive and see different great guys or gals in the world. Like if you were walking around and starting to actually look for, like you're doing a treasure hunt. Um, Larry and I did this once um, for one of our videos, actually, yeah, it's on, I have a video on my YouTube channel, which is called Love Vibe TV. If you're not subscribing to that, please do. Um, but one of them, I can't remember what it's called, but it was something around the lines of, you know, where to find a good one. But um, we went around town and we actually videotaped different places where we saw um, quality men. And we, um, we didn't know. I mean, we couldn't prove it, but we were looking for things like, wow, I, I love the way that person is dressed or wow, look at how that person opened the door for that, you know, mom with her stroller or whatever, or look at how, you know, that man, we went to um, PetSmart and we were spying on different people. We saw this guy with this really cute little poodle and it was like, oh, isn't that sweet? Like there's like, a total animal lover and just the thing is it's like you're collecting love you're collecting goodness and you're not holding this energy of oh there are no good ones out there so that is why this is important because when we're 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 holding a point of view that says there's nothing left there are no good ones out there they're all taken then that is absolutely a conclusion that will manifest. 
So what is possible when you just look at kindness and love and and qualities and name them and acknowledge them the more you can acknowledge wow there's there's really kind people they it doesn't mean that they're your person necessarily but it is going to create more space for you to attract that kind of person so i like to to do you can call it an inventory or a treasure hunt or whatever you want um and the mantra i like to use for this one is i see great unicorns all around me and you know what whether it's a man or a woman and whatever your preference is it doesn't matter collect it all collect it you know it's it's a fun little love treasure hunt because where where your attention goes that's where the energy flows. So um, another thing I, I would think about on this, so um, is to think about all the great men that you know in the world, whether you actually know them or not, is just to start collecting that data because sometimes it's easy to think, okay, well, I dated this narcissist or, or I married this, you know, sociopath or, or this didn't work out or he was a jerk and he cheated and blah, 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 or she cheated and, you know, whatever the thing. And we forget, like all of a sudden we're, we're clumping singles in this pool of like criminals, you know, and really like what is possible when we can remind ourselves and remember wow you know i don't know obama but i really like his vibe you know <laughs> i really like jimmy fallon he doesn't know me but he seems like a good person like and you don't have to prove it you just have to like let that energy contribute to you let it contribute to your experience of finding love powerful so great because when you start seeing the greatness in others it just actually opens up space for more people to be great <laughs> um so i see great unicorns all around and i'm going to use unicorn because that's neutral um oh this is a good one good one number three yippee skippy um <laughs> that's a cindy thing um okay so number three is you are not dating siri so if you're single and you want that partner in life that you want that person by your side that you want that person who has your back who can support you who can help you out in different situations then guess what ask ask for help start asking um so for example um if you are you know maybe in a new area of town okay and you actually you you see you see a guy that looks kind of interesting or a woman that looks kind of interesting you see them and you're like okay well how could I engage? Go ask them for help. The thing that we know about humans in general is that people feel so good when they can help. So um, can you guys see me on the Zoom screen? Okay. Can you do a chat? And I can't tell if you can even see me or not. Oh, and Tina, will you go on mute? I think he's... Um, Cool. Um, just if someone can post in the chat, if you can see me, okay. All good? Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yay. Okay, so anyway, so I love this because it's just an opportunity to engage. So how many times are we just going straight to, you know, Google or Siri or we're like heads are down in our phone 
what if we just asked someone and created some connection? And we know people love helping. Yes, you know, you're, you can't necessarily tell if someone is single or not, but it's a really good practice in opening up and giving the, another person an opportunity to help you. And you never know because, um, you know, when you, you know, whether you know it or not, like if you ask someone, oh, hey, do you know of a really good coffee shop around here? Or, you know, where's the closest bank? Like, someone will help. I actually, I'm, I'm married and I still think it's super fun to do this. Like when I'm in the grocery store, could I like do the whole ninja up the, the shelves to get the thing on the top shelf or in the cooler, whatever, whatever it is, because I'm short. I could ninja it. Sure. I, I can, I can do that. And it's so fun asking someone to help me, especially when it's a, it's someone cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I say, what do people love doing more than anything else? Well, we know men love feeling helpful. They do. Like men want to feel like they have a purpose. They want to feel like they're helpful and valuable. And how can you give them the opportunity to do that? And I assume the same. Like, I love feeling helpful. I love being valuable. I love being able to say, you know, oh, hey, you know, um, I helped someone. It's kind of fun. So um, that's, you know, that's one of the experiments I would invite or put out there for, for you is whether you need help or not, practice asking for help. And it's, it's a way to engage. So next time you're out, look for someone cute and standing around and just ask for help on something or an opinion or what would you order here? Or, you know, um, yeah, like just play. So um, ask for help, advice, opinion, or like a place to go. Um, so this mantra for this one is, I am willing to ask for help. Because ultimately, that experience too becomes a demonstration to consciousness, to the universe, as to what it is that you're asking for. You're like, I am asking for a relationship where we help each other and we support each other. Um, yes. Yay. Okay. Number four. Are you guys still with me? Number four. He is in your love story. He or she. Um, so what does that mean? So if you are wanting this love relationship and you're if you have any sense of like, I don't want to really tell anyone, I don't, you know, I'm okay, I'm independent, I don't need a person, I don't need a man, I don't need a relationship, but really in your heart, you're like, oh my God, I really want to have like a lover for the holidays and to be able to go to the holiday party and to, to do fun stuff like sit around a fireplace and whatever you know, and to make out on New Year's, like all of those kinds of things. Like if that's really what's stirring in your heart, or maybe you're like, no, on New Year's, I want to go to bed at nine with my schmoopy doopy by my side, eating Ben and Jerry's and watching Netflix, you know? Great. Yes. But just really, you know, let yourself want what you want. But if you're hiding your love story, if you're ashamed of having that if you think that you know it's frivolous or too much to want that and you know really you should just be okay being alone then you're really sending a lot of mixed messages so this one is the where of he she is in your love story so what does that mean it means being willing to express this 
It doesn't mean you have to do a whole like Facebook Live on, hey, I'm looking for a person. Um, but it's really being willing to say, you know what? Relationship is important to me and I am making this, um, I am open to meeting a person now and like claiming it. And I know that's kind of hard because I remember I felt really shy about that for a really long time. Like I would say, okay, I'm dating or whatever, but it really wasn't until I made finding love a priority and I would say to people, you know what? This year is my year for love and I am choosing to do whatever it takes to have a person. And that was the year that things changed for me because I was really um, honoring my desire. It wasn't, it was no longer sort of a secret desire. So that's what this is about. Like it wants to be expressed. So, um, and notice again, notice how these all reflect back to relationship because, you know, if you want a partner, a relationship, you know, a, a partnership, a relationship, uh, being adored by someone is about sharing. So start sharing now, start sharing that this is important to you. And keep in mind too, it also helps other people help you. I mean, you know, you may not want to be um, fixed up with, you know, anybody. Well, I'm just going to tell a short story. <laughs> um, I came home from college one year and I was single and my mom, we were at the grocery store and, you know, I was 20 probably. And there was like this really sweet, but totally not a candidate for me guy bagging the groceries. And my mom was like, should we fix you up? And I was like, no, mom, no. Anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, it just, it was just didn't seem like not to me at all. Anyway, but there may be opportunities like we're we're in the world now we're professionals we're busy we're making amazing changes on the planet and we know people like you you are you know people care about you so and if you find that that's not true if you're finding that you don't have community you feel really lonely you you feel like you're not living up to your potential. That's another, that's, that's another level of really like making a conscious choice to create that too, because it's important. Um, so, okay. Yes. So, you know, simple ways of talking about it are, and I used to say this, um, Oh, I'm excited to, I'm excited for a relationship. I would just say I'm really excited to create a relationship. I'm really excited to meet my special person. I'd say I'm really excited to find my special person. Um, I totally look forward to X, Y, Z. Like I always love the idea of, you know, going to hol holiday parties with my sweetie pie. And I still think that's fun. Um, yeah, so the mantra for this one is I'm in sweet anticipation to meet my special person. By the way, I'm wearing unicorn hair because you know what? This just may point to someone who's a candidate for one of you out there. Who knows? Magic. Um, okay, so. After this next one, I'm going to pause and, and check in with you guys. So keep, stay awake, people. Okay, so number five. Okay, your unicorn is super attracted to your values and passions. He's going to, she's going to, like, to that. So 
what's the question here? The question is, how are you living your values? That probably sounds really kind of stupid for some of you because you're like, well, duh, I'm living my values. But are you? You know, really ask. Like, if you really value um, creativity or you really value your health, healthy people, like you want a healthy relationship or whatever you value, then, um, then are you that, you know, because that's going to be something to consider. Hold on. I'm just checking something here really quick. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, where are you living your values and do you even know what they are? You know, I find that sometimes people aren't really aware of that. So, um, yeah, so values, your passions, like where are you living your life in love? I consider, you know, how you love your life is your love life. So what are you doing that really lights you up? Because that's where you're going to be the most attractive. So you know, do fun stuff, engage in values-based activities, consider, you know, those meetup groups and different things that, um, that, you know, your person also probably loves. I mean, it's, it's definitely a big deal if you, um, yeah, get curious. The other thing is to notice the opposite of this is true too. Like if you're noticing that you are, um, I'm going to just turn off this video. Um, if you're noticing that you're doing everything because you think, oh my God, I don't want to miss. What if my person's here? What if my person's here? What if my person's here? And you're just straight up doing it because you're afraid of, you know, FOMO fear of missing out, then I would, um, there. I would reconsider because sometimes it's going to be important to honor what it is that you truly um, need in that moment. So if it's not lighting you up, if it's a singles event or something and you're, you're like pressuring yourself to go, then you're probably not gonna feel super attractive. Just say it bluntly. Um, so really assess your life and look at ways to engage in your passions. And I do think that that's kind of extra when you're single. It's easy to start getting sort of sad or or, or afraid to do something because you don't want to do it by yourself. But, you know, this is part of, of doing things differently so you can have a different result. And if it's really hard to do that, and there's so much fear and insecurity, then we definitely need to talk. So, um, okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Okay. All right, so great. Anybody, um, yeah, you're fine, Tina. I, I just was trying to get the screen to not, it was doing funky things. Um, anyway, um, okay, so we're halfway through. What are you, what's happening for you? What are you noticing? What's popping out? What questions do you have? so far and here's the mantra for the last one i just said um my passions are leading me to meaningful love so okay so i'm gonna just gonna talk about how you uncover your values one simple way to do this is to look at the most fulfilling times of your life what have been the most fulfilling times and when you think about that experience what had to be in place 
in terms of like what values were there. Like I thought about my senior thesis in college and I did this art show and it was so fun. Like it was one of the highlights of my life. And when I look at that, it was because I got to be super creative, like, and I was creating space, which is, is a value of mine having like space. So when I was seeking my partner, then I knew that we would want, we would need to align because space is everything to me, like having, you know, beautiful, cozy space. It, it's a big deal and design. So I love that. So the other thing that was there, that there was, there was community. There was like really like-minded people around. So I value that, you know, it's, it's, was, you know, intellectual and stimulating in that way, like innovative. So all of those kinds of qualities and values were revealed for me. Then you can consider the opposite too. You consider, you know, the hardest, worst times in your life, what was missing? You know, what was missing that you actually value? You may want to think about it in terms of a relationship. Like in like a bad relationship, what made it bad and what value was missing that made it bad? So that's a kind of interesting exercise to do around that. Um, or the other thing is you can think about something you loved as a kid. You know, what were, what were those things that you loved to do? Like create, maybe bike, swim, like play in the dirt. Like what are those things that maybe you've kind of put to the wayside because you got serious and you're now a grown up. So, so cool. Okay, I'm going to check the chat. Anybody have questions at all? online or yes there is some by snarl going on that is true i i don't even hear it anymore um by snarl healing i didn't i didn't warn people they're probably wondering what it is hello there's bulldogs in the room snoring really loud um okay okay let's keep going let's keep going so six, um, six, ooh, six, use your love potion. And that brings them in. So it's not like aware out there. It's like when you're using your love potion, it creates aware. So what is your magic potion? It's your smile. Oh my gosh, that, I, I would have punched me maybe like 10 years ago saying that but I'm not. Um, this is the thing. What I love about um, smiling is that it heals people. When you smile at someone, and this is something that Yogi Bhajan taught, he taught us that um, a woman's smile heals. And to me, when I learned that, I was like, wow, like to know that I could make an impact or create a ripple just like that was a really um, powerful idea. And most of the time, we're on autopilot, our heads in our phones, we're, we're afraid, like, oh, I don't know that person. You know, I'm, I'm sure many of you actually do smile at people, but, um, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Jen writes, I would have punched myself two years ago. Now I smile all the time. So yeah, like, it's really interesting what can be created. So don't discriminate, smile at everyone and just see what happens. Like when you connect with someone and smile, it is an invitation for someone to approach you. So if you're single and you're thinking, well, I can't make the first move. I'm a woman. Women don't make the first move. 
this is a first move that you can make and it creates a very subtle like drop the hanky invitation for someone to come up same with women with women look at someone and smile and um your smile heals your smile is a blessing and you get back a hundred times the healing from the other person when you give it so it's really a real beautiful thing and there really is um there's a thing called a do shane i don't know if i'm saying that wrong do shane smile which means that it's really coming from within it's not this kind of like you know first grade school photo smile it's the um you know what i i know that this i really care like i just coming from the deeper place where it's like oh you know what i can create a ripple right now like how good it feels to know that if i smile at someone it could change their whole day it could change their whole life frankly and so how fun is that how can it get any better than this so the mantra here here the mantra here is my smile heals love it smile smile at everything smile at squirrels smile at annoying squirrels smile at everything um okay comment thanks for communicating great lorena says i feel the same way about smiling at people yay awesome so i think the really cool part about it is to actually know that it is an invitation so if you're the kind of person who's like i don't approach men i'm not going to take make the first move this is actually a first move that you can really do quite easily without it seeming like hi want to go out on a date with me you create the space which says hey i'm safe to approach hey if you approached me and talked to me i probably won't bite your head off that's really the thing like how can you make it safe and open and welcoming for another person to come up to you because so how many of you hands raised not like i can see it how many of you um, have felt like, oh, you know, I should play sort of mysterious, like mysterious is super sexy or hard to get or whatever that is. You know, frankly, to me, that's just a bunch of fucking games. And most of you, I'm guessing, are here because you don't want the games. You want something greater. You want something that's that's actually you know an opportunity for you to totally be you so start now like just be nice and it doesn't mean that you have to be a doormat it doesn't mean that you have to be abused it doesn't mean that you can't have you know different opinions about things like you you get to be you but you know this is a fun tool so Tina says, um, I am so transparent that people think that that's a game and are not used to it. So that's interesting. And that may be an interesting point of view that you're holding that kind of keeps that going. What if you can just be you and just let people do what they do it's okay yeah whether you're transparent or not transparent people are going to judge all over the place so you know what can you do um to create experiences or more more um questions the other thing i would say about that specifically tina where you say i'm so transparent that people think that that's a game and are not used to it i'm not sure what the game or not used to it is but i would also consider that there is a level of awareness that we want to have 
about what can be received. And this is this is something that I talk a lot about more in one-on-one -on -one coaching and in um and yeah, in Love Muffin, you know, we go into these kinds of things more deeply, but but really there is an energy. So it, it takes, you know, some consciousness to be able to kind of notice and read and have an awareness or perceive, you know, what can be spoken and received. Because if you're if you're totally transparent everywhere you're going going, then that's actually not doing a service either necessarily. So it's really just noticing like, okay, well, you know, what is what wants to be spoken here? What can be spoken? What can be received? And that's that's a real kind of nuance that is a muscle. It becomes a muscle because you've heard of the people who are like, you know, you've been around someone who's totally TMI, like blah 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 blah, like vagina, my ex boyfriend. Uh, like, okay, no, 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 no. I didn't ask for that. Like, you're not paying attention or aware, then. There, then it can go another direction. So, um, so you, so Tina, you say just got told by my ex tonight when we he dumped me. Oh, that's awful. So not sure what I get from friends. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm very sorry about that. That sounds like a very tender moment. Sending you good. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that's the, the love potion one. Um, number seven. Um, ooh, this is fun. Um, this one I call, um, creating relationship prosperity um your beloved unicorn finds you this is one where maybe not everybody's but can find you when you're in service of others this is such a powerful thing i mean lots of you probably are volunteering places or giving yourself giving time back to your communities but if you're not it's really worth trying i know one of the things that i did and i believe in so strongly is you know whatever you're feeling whatever that like pain is find someone who's feeling that more <laughs> and help them so for me, there was a time when I was single and I would I would feel really like profoundly lonely at times and I really wanted a person and and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm too old to have kids. I'll be alone forever and I'll be that lady that nobody visits at the senior center or whatever. And that was when it hit me. Like I need needed to use my energy and service to go hang out with old ladies who don't have anyone. So I started doing that and you wouldn't believe, of course you'll believe, but it was, I didn't believe until it happened that it was such an amazing experience. I made friends with all these old ladies. I played Scrabble every weekend and it was like this whole prosperity of love energy swarmed all around me and i had old ladies like who adored me and 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 were cheering me on and so many um so many really cool experiences and relationships i'll tell you that brought my energy up it, it created so much more and i did meet my beloved during that time and then he would start coming with me on occasion and um it was just so amazing there's such beautiful wisdom so if you feel lonely find someone lonelier 
If you feel poor, donate money to someone. If you feel, I don't know what else there is to feel. Um, but, you know, really consider that. Really consider that. Um, it shifts the energy. It becomes expansive. Being helpful is expansive. Being in service is just the hugest, like, love ball you can create. So the mantra I have for this one is I lead with my heart. Um, yeah, so yeah, come up with new ways you can serve your community and give back. You never know who you're going to meet do doing that too. One of my clients, she met her beloved because she was teaching yoga to people who um, had Parkinson's. And her mother had Parkinson's, and now her beloved's, well, her beloved, her husband now, um, his dad had Parkinson's. So they just met, They and it was not her typical type at all. And, you know, he and his dad were coming to the class for, for months, and it, she hadn't even thought of it. And then there we go. Poof. So, okay, Christine's asking, how did you meet Larry? Well, after I did all of these things that I'm teaching you, plus got coaching and, and made the commitment to find love, I met him, <laughs> Cindy says, in the buffet line. Um, no, not exactly. But I did meet him online. So that is one place. And I was actually thinking about all the different places that my clients have met their beloveds over the past eight years that I've been doing this. Um, six years full time, but eight years, two years of that was part time. Anyway, a lot of them, I will say, if you want the breakdown, majority of them, I will say were online. You know, people met online. Other places, though, like I said, being in service. Um, two people met sitting next to someone on a plane that they ended up marrying. Um, uh, one person met at like a um, kind of spiritual gathering. So, you know, honestly, I could go through it oh, all, the, all the different ways. But I think the most important thing is to, you know, be conscious in your process. And um, don't think, oh, well, you know, I guess it'll just happen. Like if it hasn't happened up till now, you're here on this call, let's do something different. Please, please don't leave this call and go, okay, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I will tell you that is not aware. That's called denial and it's called avoidance and it's called, you know, the slowest way ever. So. Um, you know, what can you do to change the energy to consciously create and to be living that ask of, I am that relationship. So, yay. Okay. Eight. We're almost through the list. I hope you guys are writing things down. Are you writing things down? Are you getting some ahas? Will you give me a little feedback? Let me know. <laughs> um, okay, number eight. He loves your goddessness, or she. And um, so, this one is really about how our our outer sparkle does influence our inner sparkle. So, if you are wanting a beloved or you're anticipating your sweet person, then consider how you present yourself. And I'm not saying you're, 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 you have to change the way you look or who you are. It's about what adorning yourself in whatever way you want does for your energy. So you know, if you 
it, you'll know. I mean, if you feel sort of like frumpy and blah, then yeah, that's, that's what you're going to be putting out there. So noticing what makes you feel alive and lit up and inspired. And honestly, I can't leave my closet until my, my outfit feels like it's lit up and it doesn't take me long to do that, but I, I really am listening. I'm like, is this a yes today or is this a no? And I just, even though I work at home and I interact with people all over the world just from Love Muffin Worldwide Headquarters right here, right here, that I don't necessarily need to go out, you know, unless I'm going to speak or to meet with people or whatever, networking event or meeting friends or going to Zumba. Um, you know, there are plenty of days that I don't leave the house, but there, there's never a day that I don't dress for me to feel like I'm in love. I like to say that I dress like love feels. So consider that for yourself and it's going to look different for all of you. Um, celebrate you. Celebrate you. Live in a way that is pro you. And that's the mantra. The mantra is I am pro me. <laughs> and so, you know, what is that way? And also just noticing your posture too when you're out. Are you always looking down? There's actually science that proves if you're looking down, it just brings your energy down. If you're looking up, it brings your energy out. And what we know in Kundalini Yoga too is there's technology in wearing all white. So when, when I teach Kundalini Yoga, I'm wearing all white. And that is because when you wear all white, it actually expands your aura. Isn't that interesting? You wear all white, it expands your aura. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. I don't play the like Labor Day white rule or whatever that rule is. Um, but it's fun to experiment with, you know, and really try things out. Do you typically wear a lot of black? Not that black is wrong or anything, but what would it feel like to, to wear white? If, you know, sometimes I choose to wear black because I want to feel that, you know, it's rare, but whatever. Um, so yeah, yeah, Cindy, wear white. See how that feels. It expands your aura in all directions. And that's beautiful. Um, yes. So good. Okay. Number nine. Okay. Your unicorn gallops towards love and runs from fear. <laughs> so this is actually kind of an interesting transition from the head up, head down thing. So like when we're in fear and we're in like that insecurity and, you know, this won't happen or I'm not good enough or, you know, I'm not attractive or all of these beliefs that um, are coming from fear, then your energy is like, it's just closed. It's like shut down. When you are in love, which you're affirming your truth and you're coming from a place where you um, are connected to love. I mean, connected to, to something, your infinite you, let's say. Your infinite you, which is love, then and you're making choices from there, it is felt and it's seen. So how many of you have ever had that experience when you have met someone and you're all like super giddy and, and excited about it and you're like, oh my God, I have a crush on this person. And then all of a sudden, 
you have all of these people who are attracted to you. So like when it rains, it pours kind of feeling. Um, that's because you're totally radiating your love vibe. Yes. So, um, so there's a whole bunch of different areas in this. Like if you're a people pleaser and you find that you're always seeking approval from everyone and then basically, you know, you're saying yes to everyone and saying no to yourself, then that can be a really funky vibe too. That's definitely not a love attraction habit. So being aware, and this is a big one for so many women, if you're a people pleaser, that it would be really helpful if you stop that. Because, um, and, and that, that's a process. I'm not saying that's necessarily easy because I know that I've lived the pleaser for a super long time. So it's taken a lot of practice to be willing to disappoint people or, or tell someone something that you're, you're worried they're going to feel rejected or hurt or whatever because you're choosing for you. That's a big deal. Um, because this is really the time to really get in relationship with yourself and know who you are and want what you want and be able to claim that and um, also have the ability to navigate consciously and, and also not make any of that so serious. Like, have fun, you know? lots of different layers. So um, in this one, you know, being in love versus fear, I put the mantra here is it's safe to be me. It's safe to be me. This is a fun experiment around this. Like if you find that you go on first dates and you're like, oh my God, it's, oh, I probably won't like him or whatever. Like all of this like churning around it that you know what or if you worry you're worried like oh well, what if they don't like me and blah, 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 like all of that what if you experiment and you go on the date and you assume that you're gonna like them see what that feels like it actually is pretty powerful like assume that you're gonna like them not that you have to marry them, that's a whole different game, <laughs> but assume that you're gonna like them and assume that you're gonna have fun. Yay. Um, okay. Yes, okay. I will say that there's a lot of things in this class that if you don't have the love attraction toolkit that I created that has 51 tools to help you with love attraction. Please go get it. It's $97. It's totally worth it. It's on my website, bighappylove.com. Go to the work with me, go down to products and get it. Um, bye, Jennifer. Come back and watch the rest of the replay. Um, Yay. Okay. So now, okay. Okay. All right. So number 10. Okay. So some of you might be like, wait a minute, you said you weren't going to do this. Well, okay. Number 10 is, yay. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Tina, did you? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. She says, I agree. I agree with that one. Yes. Assume you like them. It's really good. Um, number 10. Okay. So this one is about online dating. I know I said I wasn't going to focus on it, but hey, one out of 11 is not bad. Um, the reason why I really want to bring this up is because most of the time um, we think, oh, you know what? Online dating is this like scary thing that only a bunch of losers and jerks in there and scammers and they're all crazy or whatever we 
we can say all these judgments, 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 judgments come out about online dating. And then this is what I hear all the time right now from this. Like, I just want to find someone organically. Yes. Welcome to almost 2020. We are in the Aquarian age. We are in, we have been living with massive amounts of technology for the last 25 years, heavy duty, right? And guess what? I mean, look at us. I have three devices, four or five. I have a zillion devices in front of me right now. This is our world. Welcome to our world. So this is actually as organic as anything else. So I just want to bring that reframe forward because so much, I think there's so much shame and so much like, oh, you know, there must be something wrong with me if I need help finding love, or there must be something wrong with me if I have to use a, use a online dating thing. If you're saying that, cancel, 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 cancel. Because no, this is just one of many ways that we can connect with people. And like I said, a majority of the clients that I've helped get into to relationship, the majority have met through online dating. It's still like not, it's not even half. But it's a majority. This is a majority chunk of the people. So I just think it's important to acknowledge it. And if you find it to be a terrifying thing, then how can we help you with that? Because honestly, you know, the reason why online dating is so terrifying for people or frustrating or exhausting is because we're not, we don't know how to take care of our own energy. We're not navigating it in a way that actually honors us and we're making up a whole shit ton of stories about why it's so horrible and just draining all our energy through that if you can approach it from a place that's really playful and light and i'm going to give you some tips um then everything can change so i have a zillion tips so i'm just going to run through the, a couple of these because i just want to be able to support you in having the most expansive palette and ways and possibilities that you can have. And I'm only sharing 11 and there's a bazillion more. So yay, this is basic online dating tips by Reverend Lunch Lady right here. So best on basic online dating tips. Okay, start with an attitude of amusement and play. Hey, you want to you wanna meet someone and have fun, just, just stay light. Don't go serious. Don't go like, oh my God, you know, this is probably a scammer. Like, don't go into the drama. Don't choose drama. Just choose lightness. Um, don't wait for someone to write you. Just play in there. If you find something curious about someone, you know, say, oh, this is interesting about you, and, and, and create dialogue, no rules. I don't believe in any rules. It's really you and how you're showing up as you that's going to um, matter. Um, lead with love when you're doing it. Like, even as you, like, if you're going up to your computer, just go, wow, you know, really what's possible is that this could be the bridge to your beloved. Feel that. Um, just hold some kindness. Try not to take things seriously. If someone sends you a, a scary penis pic or something, like, what if you just ignore it? And, and don't lose energy about it. Um, and sit in with the ones that aren't a match for you that you don't like instead of going into drama like i can't believe i attracted this or making it a story or like oh my god tell your mom tell your sister like you know cry 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 you know 
then um, let it go. I mean, really, really, really um, try to um, remember that people are just, people are human. They were longing for connection and that's what it's about. Bye, Nicole. Thanks for joining. Come back to watch the rest. Um, and let your vision of love be so exciting that it propels you forward, that, that it's bigger than any fear, bigger than any secure insecurity. Um, yeah, so there's more, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Here's another good one. Commit to quick recoveries. You know, if you got excited about someone and it didn't work out, just trust that there's some cosmic intervention and go to the next. You know, if you're really committed to finding your beloved, don't let anything take you off the path. And don't let anything become a story of why you can't have it. Because if that's in your heart, your person is out there. That's the only way it's there is because your person is out there. And the other thing is, you're not just with your love story. Your love story is somebody else's love story. So keeping that commitment and, well, breaking the commitment means you're, you know, delaying someone else's love story. How about that for a guilt trip? Yeah. So anyway, okay. Um, so mantra here i am lovable and beautiful and playful online dating yay so um yes um okay so final one the final one number 11. yes number 11 is be the best beloved for you. You don't have to, or learn how to be the best you, is what I said. You, you don't have to go at this alone. You can enlist trusted support. Like I said, you know, Love Muffin is my private coaching program. I have a couple other things that can help people with online dating on my work with me site. But if you're really serious about finding a partner, then, you know, consider where, first of all, how long you've been on the planet. You know, are you willing to take time to do things differently? We've collected a lot of patterns over time. And what I see with my clients is that once they can start changing these deeper patterns then different stuff can show up and once you can start learning you know tools and strategies and communication and ways of being in relationship then you can create something beyond what you've ever created before because i guarantee that most people most of you me included we were just just winging it you know, it's what I call status quo dating. We just wing it. We hope something happens. We think, okay, it's sort of like um, Cinderella, like, okay, one day my prince will come kind of thing. And then we're, we're waiting for it to happen. But we can, we do have the power to create. So the thing that I also love about this is when you're doing the inner work, to create a beloved relationship, especially in a one-on-one -on -one capacity like we do in Love Muffin, because there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, you're actually, once again, it's that demonstration. It's, you know, showing consciousness that I am willing to be in committed relationship. And coaching is that. You know, I always have a coach. <laughs> and certainly when I was looking for love and I realized that I'd spent, you know, the first 40 years, you know, flip-flopping and collecting painful relationships and mediocre relationships and 
loser relationships and so a lot of great people, but no one who could be really that person that could walk by my side and actually co-create in life. And the shift from the bargain brand kind of relationship to what I call unicorn love has completely changed my world, completely changed my world in so many ways in, you know, my lifestyle, in my, my health, in my wealth and in my happiness. And I can't say enough. I mean, I quit my corporate job where I was making tons of money just to dedicate my life to this. So, you know, if you really are wanting something like the cost of continuing to wing it and continuing to potentially put yourself in position to collect the same failed relationships over and over again, which takes time and energy and money and therapy and all of those things to recover. I don't know about you, but for me, there were relationships that, you know, once it was over, I, I really needed to kind of check out for a while. And that's sort of what phase one in Love Muffin program can be about is just like, okay, so phase one can be, all right, I am going to cultivate the safety and security and vision within so that I can create something way beyond. And, you know, I, I'll just say that this is not just about finding a unicorn. This is about, you know, having a greater experience on the planet. And being in love is not frivolous. Being in love is what we need right now. We need to be way more in love. And what that creates in the space of consciousness and for the planet and for everyone is it really, it's uplifting. It's bringing the vibration up to a place where, you know, we can make some crazy important change. And so I really encourage you to um, be your own beloved. Choose you. And if you want to change your life, to transform your life, let me help you. You know, I can help you. Um, the tools that I've been trained in are so profoundly powerful. Um, and I'm not going to go into that in detail, but there's regenerating images and memory, which works with the subconscious. There's Kundalini yoga. There's tapping there's all sorts of ways there's access consciousness tools that um that really expedite the process so this is um just so exciting to me so i'm so glad you're here and i want to invite you to set up a time to chat you know if you even remotely think, oh my God, maybe I could, you know, receive love coaching. Obviously, I mean, I'm going to be very open about this. It is an investment and it's not necessarily a small investment. So if you struggle to like buy, you know, a taco, then it's probably not the best time. But I would also say that if you struggle to buy a taco, there's something else that does need to be healed here. And the most expensive thing is being single for the rest of your life. I know that in partnership, being able to share those financial burdens, or not really burdens, like opportunities, are, um, it's freeing. It's so freeing. So I want to meet you. So who's going to go out and we'll do what I am offering are a couple happy and love strategy sessions, I call them. And that's a chance to really look at what's happening for you, you know, create a new vision, expand into, okay, this would be the strategy. And hey, are you a candidate for Love Muffin? We'll have a little discussion. 
do we like each other? Let's see, because we're basically going to be <laughs> together for, for some time if you want to, to do this work together. And I would love to do that for you. So go to, you can go to bighappylove.com and right on the homepage, it says something about attract the one who adores you just as you are. It says, help me find love. Click on that button. And that is your form to apply for love coaching or to just have a discussion to see if this is even something that you want to um, consider. So, um, so yes, because you deserve it. You deserve it. And um, I, I just, I just love, I love the one-on-one -on -one because this morning I was working with a client and she was like, Oh my God, like I felt her energy completely shift. And, you know, we were actually talking about money stuff. Like, so there's no real like limit. Love is money. Money is love. Like all of the found, the foundation of pretty much, well, the foundation of success is, you know, the quality of our relationships. So, and money is love, love is money. So we've already talked about, you know, success and creating what you want in life, which then impacts our health and our wealth and everything. So yay. So yay, unicorns. Hallelunicorn, your unicorn is here. So I look forward to connecting with you. Thanks for joining me tonight on where to find the good ones. And guess what? This is the biggest where. The biggest wear is the underwear. I like to say that. The biggest wear is the underwear, and that's the inside. Do you have clean underwear? Because you want to do this inner work before you can actually attract um, your special person. So, okay. So happy you've been here. Thanks for hanging out with me, and we will see you really soon. Bye.